So basically, I'm going to talk about the games industry today, and obviously with a focusing on, on cloud, and where is the game industry going? Because I've been lucky to be in the industry all my life, and, and people ask, why do you travel so much, or why do you work so much? Because I, I can't separate the work from the fun. It's an incredibly interesting industry. So, as Ben said, my background, I was early even with Sega Mega Drive in the early 90s, then with Electronic Arts, then Nokia approached me because they wanted to go into the mobile gaming on a big scale before uh, iPhone was launched, of course. Uh, Xbox, and, and being with all these kind of big brands, you pick up a good network, of course, and, and learn a lot. And then I set up my own advisor business, had also a stint with Warner Brothers. But as an advisor, I'm traveling around the world. I worked with HTC Vive in the beginning when they launched. I was actually one of the first in the Minecraft advisory board that was sold for 2.5 billion to Microsoft uh, two years after I left. But that was actually the best roadmap I ever seen from a startup. So that's um, what, what we're doing is basically provide advice, business intelligence, and C-level introductions. And what is an introduction that could be, for example, Nasdaq approached me before Gamescom in Cologne and said, hey, can you arrange your lunch with 20 interesting people that's going to grow their business? I'm thinking, hmm, yeah, I can. And, and luckily, all of them show up for lunch. But, but mostly, it's going into startup in an early phase. Or if you're thinking, how do I do business in Russia, Turkey, or wherever? Anyway, I'm happy to be here, and, and the collaboration with Distri, I think, is fantastic. It's the fourth year I'm here now. So growth and direction of the games industry, focusing on what is cloud gaming, because that's a bit of a buzzword. That's also been a little bit like VR was before. And how can you be involved and, and capitalize in, in, on this boom? So what, what are we seeing? We see growth on all fronts, on all sectors. And I'm like, I find it amazing. And even with my background, I have to really be on my toes to understand what's happening. So for example, on the, on the first slide there, I was in Nürnberg Toy Show, which is a massive show, because I wanted to go to Nürnberg again after many years being away to see what's happening also with AR and XR in the, in the mixed reality on the, in the toy industry. And I met the CEO of Kids Insight, which was an incredibly interesting meeting because he said, you know what, we, we do, they do very rich research, and, and specifically in UK, also in Europe. 66% of four or five years old in UK have access to their own iPad. And kids today is one third of the use and spend on, on online internet. You have another company, Super Awesome, that's, I think it's based in Canada, which also Minecraft put a stake, sorry, Microsoft put a stake in. So it's so much happening in the younger audience. Roblox, for example, 100 million average user, valuation of $2.4 billion six months ago. And basically it's kids and of course teenagers and some older guys developing their own game. And it's actually cloud gaming, growing like crazy. You have Fortnite, which I'm coming back to again, 200 million users. But not only on, on that side. Of course, you have geographical growth as well. Uh, but you have, as I said, demographic. I'm in the category 50 plus, struggling to figure out. I had to stop playing FIFA four years ago because I was always losing. Uh, it, it's too fast. Uh, and speaking on too fast, I, I just talked to Extrify about the new mouse they're having. It's so light because eSport, you have to be super fast. But coming back to my age group, 10%, it's still big. I had a meeting in London on Monday with a mobile game company. Their core game, the audience for the biggest spending of 42 to 45 years old, in this case, male with, with mobile games. So, and it will just keep growing. And I, I promise you, it's going to continue to grow. And I'm, I'm going to show you why. I like to show this slide, and I actually remodel it a bit for, for this presentation. 
And I think it's good to give you a snapshot if we go back to the 90s, to coming back to Japan, uh, the, le the legacy, the culture of Japan, Japan as a country, but also with the brands. I mean, I was lucky to be meeting Bandai Namco, what they've done with Pac-Man, you have Pokemon, you have Nintendo, you have Sonic, and those brands are still hanging in there and actually growing, especially uh, uh, Super Mario, of course, and uh, Pokemon. But at that time, every five years, there was a new console coming in, and that console had their own joypad, and you had a physical game. Nokia was coming in, as I said, they approached me in 2003, trying to figure out how to do uh, cloud gaming and multiplayer online with mobile, but it was way too early. And then Steve Jobs, again, figuring out, I, I say he's the Machiavelli of the digital age, actually. He figuring out that nobody could figure out the ecosystem with iTunes, which suddenly the game business turned global in a heartbeat. Because earlier the game industry has been very much, first you launch in Japan, then you launch in US, and six months later you launch in Europe. With this was a bam. And then Minecraft, I think they approached me May 2010. They said also, let's go global from day one and skip the traditional things. Even Facebook started with browser gaming. Then Sony was coming in with new PlayStation, tries more grip. So now we have, we have console, we have PC, we have mobile. 2015, China was lifting a lot of bans because there is a big conglomerate today, a tech conglomerate called Tencent, which has a stake in so many big game companies like Epic Games, Supercell, Paradox. They have a foot in enormous amount of business. They're the biggest games company in the world today. No, not too pe many people know that. But they had to invest outside China. China is also interesting because I think they're probably going to do more regulation. I think some of the regulation is actually good because when you look up there, you have Discord, which is just chat. You have Fortnite. Coming back to Roblox, you also have bad behavior. Some, some people trying to go into these children and, and target them. And therefore, there has to be regulation. There's huge investment in machine learning, and you randomly put into various servers to avoid that kind of thing. But basically what happened in the last couple of years, continue to propel the industry, is you have watching coming in. I didn't thought of that 10 years ago. You have chat coming in. And you actually create your own social network, because as in the real life today, also in the digital world, the, the, especially the children, they create their own identity over these games. And these games also going to be their own social network. Influencers. Uh, I like the headline, the man who didn't know he had a brand. Uh, because influencers, it's just amazing. And I thought like three years ago, how shall I start to approach an influencer? Do they want to meet me? Because they can be in a small city, they can be focusing on FIFA. There is a fantastic female in Australia focusing on AR, uh, Pokemon and Harry Potter. N hundreds and hundreds of viewers. And it's basically gamers that decide, okay, I stream myself playing. Hope, hopefully somebody's watching. And they build their own communities uh, around the content, what they want to do. And it's just a totally new business model. And brands are cashing in on the opportunity how to collaborate with these influencers. And I, I talked to a PR agency I know in Sweden. I've been knowing them for 15 years. I said, can you help me here? Because I'm meeting an influencer. How much of your energy, if you look before, when you had traditional, let's say, TV, billboard, uh, magazine, etc., how much of your effort is now towards the influencer for big brands? They have, for example, Bethesda that have Skyrim and Fallout. And they said 50%, 50% we work with influencers now. Because of all the new games coming in, the digital content coming in, there is also a congestion in, in, on Steam. Even Nintendo Switch digital platform, there's so many games, thousands and thousands of games. And the journalists, of course, can't write about everything. So they use influencers. And, and I'm going to show a video here which gives you a bit of an understanding how it works. Feels like 2 a.m.
game nope oh I gotta, gotta, gotta reset my key buds brought back the actual SMG huh what? so when I when I look into of course I knew ninja and Microsoft approach him with their new platform mixer but then I thought, let's take another deep dive into this guy. And he actually, I was like, wow. He has 22 billion views on YouTube, started 2011. But he's, he's also a top player in, in eSport. So he has a, a credibility from a gaming, but obviously an entertainer. So uh, you can just follow YouTube today. And I, when I was with Warner Brothers, I think I had executives coming in 2013 in, in LA talking about YouTube, what they want to do in the industry. And it's amazing. If you take YouTube, it's obviously video on demand. And then you have Twitch, which is live streaming. So it's just a bigger audience, different in audience, of course. So if we then say, what is the global games market? So I don't want to dive too deep into it, but I, I used to say it's relatively easy if you're dipping in here for a minute. 50% of the market is mobile, and the other half, 50%, is non-mobile, PC, console, etc. And also you can say that half of the industry is nowadays China, Japan, a little bit of APAC, and the other half is America, Europe, Latin America. What surprised me, because I had a few surprises over all these years, is how strong PC are. I thought PC was going to go back a little bit with iOS coming in, with iPad coming in, but PC holding in there. If, if you look at Germany, for example, super strong PC. And they have the tradition. Scandinavia, again. So, so you have console with downloaded games. And also, retail, is act, it's not dying. Because coming back again, there were so many overlapping with Ben, which was amazing. Dubai, for example, that region, it's so hot. You can go to a shopping mall. You can probably play golf in the morning. You can be on the beach an hour or so. And you can go to a restaurant. But they want to go to a shopping mall and buy physical games. So every single sector have growth. I was in um, Kuala Lumpur in Singapore in November because I wanted to see the growth of mobile industry. I was amazed with Marvel brand, but also eSport. And, and that in, also that, that sector propelling. And I think that's, that's why I find it so amazing. And this, I got this. This is actually official numbers. You can get them from New Zoo's um, homepage. Uh, so you can download some, some numbers. They adjusted the total. At first, they thought 152 billion. I think 148.8 is quite nice. And if you're then looking what's happening the next couple of years, you can see a growth of 9 to 10%. And again, quite evenly spread between browser, PC, console, and tablets. I used to say, I can't be that involved in mobile phone, smartphone, because what kind of added value can like agency do or business developing do because it's so much algorithm and tools. I was a little bit surprised when I was in Japan, November 2018, because then I understood that the smartphone business is a lot of a brand game with, with Crash Candy Crush. You have um, the Supercell, you have the big brands being there for years, for years, for years. That's also why uh, Activision pay a lot of money for King, Microsoft for Minecraft, and Tencent for Supercell. It's the same brands hanging in there where there is more fluctuation and change in the, in the other segments, of course. So, Cloud gaming, um, that's a, a quite broad thing because Roblox is cloud gaming. You have servers in the cloud and you randomly select it when you go in.
but it's much more complex than, than Netflix because I, I put in, there was so much talk about Netflix of games on LinkedIn, so I said Netflix on games is not gonna happen, and I said that three years ago. Because gaming is so much more complex uh, with all the function and the depth of the gameplay and directions you have to go. And today there is no game specifically decided, uh, designed for the cloud. If you look at the, another success with Apple was that the hardware and the software guys were sitting in the same room, which was completely different from the PC industry. And that is what some big companies now looking into how should we do native games for the cloud, specifically made for the clouds. How are you gonna do with the payment system? Because 10 years ago, it was MasterCard and Visa, American Express. Now there's Google, Apple Pay. There is actually own economies out there coming to be, own social networks, own economies. Where is this going? Huge investment in machine learning. I, I had an interesting assignment figuring out what's off the Silicon Valley. Cambridge in UK, the place is growing. Everybody, every company is putting in AI in, in, in Cambridge in UK, voice recognition. I think Ericsson, incredibly famous, well-known brand, I think they have something cooking long-term long on, the, on the cloud. You have 5G operators, you have Nvidia's share price, I think it's growing like five, 10% the last couple of days per day because they seem to be good position on the 5G and also on the cloud from an entertainment point of view. Having said of this, it's still early day. Cloud gaming is a bit like eSport. eSport is less than $2 billion or $150 billion. Same with cloud gaming today. If you, of course, put Roblox aside, it's relatively small business, but it's definitely going to be there. And I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes also how you can still be involved because you're thinking if the business goes more and more digital, is my opportunities going away? Coming back to, to Bob's incredibly interesting stories, it's not because you can always think outside the box or do a maverick move. I think I have a video here. Yes, thank you guys. So I thought, what kind of video should I show about cloud gaming? And that, again, I think that's the luck I have with my credibility because I emailed this company and said, hey, do you have any good videos? Yeah, of course, bam. This is just one company, but that's also show a little bit of an overview, what is cloud gaming? And if you look into this company and NVIDIA and so on, you can actually use the old machine and then playing with the cloud. Obviously, there are geographical restriction and the, the strength of the of the broadband will decide. But the interest is there from so many stakeholders. And if you look into the cloud and big companies, and even here you see there are some companies not even mentioned. You have Apple, you have Microsoft. Look at the share price of those two companies. You have Amazon on the infrastructure side, AWS, they have Twitch. They've done a lot of things under the radar. You have Google, of course, with YouTube, Gplay, and Google Stadia. You have Facebook, who acquired a Spanish company called Play Giga, who's been around for a few years, working with operators in Spain, which I also visit. And you have Tencent Cloud. And then you're looking into where do you have servers, and how many servers do you have? Because that's also an issue in, in eSport. What kind of content do we have? And how do we get the gamers? 
And they have to be careful also with the brand and not overbranding, coming back to the Galaxy story. Because I know, for example, when Facebook acquired Instagram, I know a few of the teenagers said, no, I'm not going to have this. So you, you can't be too commercial. And that's also the same with, with um, product placement. And there is some ad-driven business model because another reason for the propelling growth of the industry, as I said, you have geographical things, you have demographic, you have technology, but you also have a change in business model, game as a service. And some of this is ad-driven, which some of them are less good. You also have to figure out how do you attract new game players because the, the loot boxes and that kind, there is, there is things to be figuring out from regulation point of view, both from the developers, the trade bodies, and to some degree, the governments actually. Um, Activision Blizzard, I didn't mention on the, on the graph, I thought I'd do it here. It's a, a leading standalone publisher, of course. They did a live streaming deal with YouTube, and YouTube, 200 million daily users in entertainment. It's a bit like Epic Game, 300 million. And it's huge. If you talk, think about Europe, 200, 300 million. And they're down a live streaming, streaming deep. So they basically go exclusively with YouTube. So how can you be involved? Well, so many things. If I start in the right corner, sponsorship with a team, with an eSport team, with an influencer, you can invest. Um, again, coming back to beta, I didn't know about that retail either. You can invest in location-based entertainment because things going digital, people want to meet. You can invest in a company. You can basically invest yourself into this industry, not with a big investment. Some of the startup, they're dying for 100,000 euro, whatever. And of course, with an influencer, you can use an agency to reach out to an influencer or try it yourself. Give them a few stuff and they wear it. Hardware, Nintendo, when they came with Switch, was another surprise for me because obviously I thought it was a big, a great hardware, but selling 50 million units. Again, when I was in Japan, November 2018, Nintendo Switch sold double the amount of PlayStation 4. And, and you have accessories for that. I, there is a company here at Distri, for example, have a lot of good things for, for the Switch. So you have the accessories part. You have games. Some game companies just want to go digital, but now they are, again, coming back to the previous stories, there is always things you can do. There's actually companies now saying, hey, we can make them physical again. So you basically approach the studio and say, let's do a retail versions. There are, there are countries that really like retail versions. Coming back to the UAE, Dubai, you can either have it for broadband challenges, retail structure, or weather. I mean, in Scandinavia, you play a lot of games because it's bloody cold. In Dubai, you want to go into a shopping mall to look at games. And then you have accessories. That market is growing. I think two years ago, I, I reached out to New Zoo and asked, and headsets was 60% of the business. GFK have done some presentation. I, I don't know the percentage, but it's actually growth also there. You had racing shares here at, at this tree. You have, you have savings. I mean, you, can, you have space. You have everything. You have cables. So many areas linked to the accessories, what they want to do. Esport team, influencers. So the opportunities is a lot. I also want to touch base a little bit on eSport. So, so what is eSport? But you can see they still need to figure out how to monetize the ecosystem. Because this was a while ago, $1.1 billion. Remember the $150 billion. So it's a lot of noise. But clearly it's growing. Uh, but you can see that the way you monetize is you have sponsorship, media rights, advertising, merchandise and ticket, and game publishers fee. So there is obviously areas that need to mature a little bit in eSport and how big can it grow. You have also company now growing saying, hey, we are 10 people, we're betting and playing a game and the winner takes it all except a 10% fee for, for that company. So um, what you need to think about then coming out from my, my speech is who will control player data and how can you as a company optimize the data 
What are they doing? What are they playing? The churn, retention, etc. <laughs> a little bit like the retail store to understand the, the users. And how do you reach out to an influencer? Do you have somebody in your area? Have a look. I promise you have. When the market continues to go digital, players want to meet. Many town centers are, there, are struggling today what they're going to do with all the online deliveries from Amazon, etc. You have huge opportunities to get a good retail space. A bit like Starbucks, it's not only coffee, as you know, it's a social experience. I think you're going to see new social experience coming up in the digital age because people want to meet and players want to meet. Game companies looking for new partners. Think outside your box, also outside your region. And your team, what kind of experience is needed the next three, four, five years? Somebody that knows everything about influencers or geographical areas or tech. But um, have a look at your team. And um, I think that's my takeaways that I give to you to constantly think about. Because even with my, I would say, huge experience, humbly, I need to really stop and think, what's happening here? What's happening here? To stay on my toes. So I, we, I think that, so that's obviously my last slide. I'm basically saying, stay tuned in the gaming industry. Don't, don't be afraid because it's so many new things happening. You can be in there, and many of you are already in the industry, and if you're figuring how you want to go in, there is a lot of companies here actually connected to gaming, and I'm, I'm actually very, I'm very pleased with Distri that asked me to come here and talk about the games industry. So with that, I would say, I promise the money is out there for sure. Thank you, guys.